Guys, so welcome to the first kind of lesson on 3D cameras and parallax. Um, so through this lesson, we're going to learn a lot of, of, about the difference of the different types of tracks you can do and how to differentiate and how to know which one to actually use in any given scenario. Um, so there's a lot of different methods you can use, um, but we need to go over all of them and understand just a little bit of the behind the scenes of how they're working um, to know which one to use. So if you come through this lesson, you should already know basic 2D tracking, which is just a tracker node in Nuke. Um, and essentially what this node is doing is just tracking one individual point. So if I pause the video here and we look at, uh, here we go, pause the video here. You can see that this 2D track is just tracking this uh, corner point. And so it's only tracking the motion of this cube in the foreground. It's not tracking everything in the scene. Uh, it's not going to work for all those things. Um, so what we need to understand is the concept of parallax. And parallax means that uh, objects in the foreground move much more than objects that are further away if a camera is moving. Uh, so you can see if you look at the word parallax here and you look at the par word parallax up here, uh, this one's moving much quicker across our screen than this one back there. Uh, same with cubes. So stare at this cube and stare at this cube. You'll see that this cube is going to go off of our computer uh, screen much faster than the cube that's much further away. Uh, so you can see uh, as the camera zooms past, uh, this one goes away and this one is still in the middle. Uh, so now if we... So th yeah, that's the concept of 2D tracking. It only tracks one point in one plane of uh, parallax. Uh, the next kind of track we have is uh, a planar track. And a planar track is not quite a 3D track, but it's kind of uh, tracking one plane of parallax. Um, so it's kind of tracking this entire surface here. And if we were to stick a texture like a brick wall or graffiti or something like that, we could stick it on this planar track and it's going to stick. Um, even though the, par the movement of the very front of this cube is a little bit different than the, the movement of the back. Uh, we're tracking that entire plane and perspective. Um, so that's good to know. And it's also good to note that how a planar track works is it's not actually tracking four individual points. It's tracking the surface or the pattern of the surface um, that it's looking at. Uh, so a good surface to planar track needs a little bit of texture. Um, so like maybe a brick wall or a, a surface that has tracking markers on it. Um, so that's good to note. And lastly, we have the full-on 3D camera track. And the way a 3D camera track works, so we can see here, this is a 3D camera track. Uh, the way a 3D camera track works is actually not just that these are all 3D points immediately. Um, the way the computer is understanding it is each one of these little individual orange dots is actually a 2D track. Um, so the computer is trying to do, if you do an auto 3D track in Nuke, uh, it is individually tracking all of these thousands of points of contrast. Um, so from those 2D points, uh, from our 2D video, because our video is just a flat screen, uh, that's what the computer thinks. It doesn't understand that there's a cube back here and there's a cube up here. It doesn't understand, the, understand these spatial differences. Um, but when you throw thousands of these 2D points into a scene, um, it measures the difference between all of these points and the speed at which they're moving across your scene. Uh, it measures the parallax difference. Uh, and this is essentially a very important concept uh, for 3D tracking and to know that this is what's happening. So I'm gonna reiterate this concept with a couple more diagrams from the top down. So if you look at the same scene, uh, from the top down, we can see here's our camera and there's some cubes uh, going backwards in space. Uh, so if I hit play, we can see the cameras, that, uh, sorry, the, the cubes that are further away from the camera are in frame for much longer than the ones that are in the very foreground. Um, so if we look here very closely, just at the, the two cubes that have numbers next to them, we can see that the, the closer cube goes off the screen faster than the one further away. Uh, so this is kind of the calculation that's happening behind the scenes in the camera tracker node uh, in Nuke. Um, and this is how we start to build a 3D world from a 2D video. Um, so the goal of this is to build a 3D world that matches over the real world of the 2D video. 
So if we go to the next frame, so this is again the concept I just explained. Computer only sees 2D video. So this orange line, it doesn't understand that, the, that this green cube is further away or these cubes are closer. Um, but once we throw a lot of 2D tracking points and measure the difference, it starts to actually understand that these points are in 3D space and it starts to make the calculations of where they are. So from that 2D line, which is our video, we're starting to understand a 3D matrix. And once we have those kind of points thrown everywhere, what it starts to do is a process called triangulation. So triangulation is um, calculating the difference between those points, the, the speed at which uh, they're moving in relation to the camera as well. And it's starting to build a 3D matrix or a, like a plane. Um, just think of a 3D space. It's like a volume. Uh, and it's also, met, it's also starting to understand the camera's movement. So we're solving the actual camera's movement. So now we have a 3D camera that matches the real world's camera that we filmed with. Um, and it matches all the motion and the speed of that camera. So if we fade away here, camera motion solved, our 3D scene is built. And we see a little green lines here that represent the camera's motion over time. Um, so this is very important. Um, and another important concept to know is that triangulation, it's called triangulation because it requires three points. And the way mathematically this is all calculated, you don't need to know the math behind it. Um, but you do need to understand that you need to have at least three points for a, um, a successful triangulation to happen. So for example, if you're trying to track a, a scene and get a 3D track, and you don't have at least three good points, preferably at least six at all times, um, you might get a little bit of an error in your 3D camera, and it's not gonna move the same way as your real camera, uh, which is not good, because we're trying to stick things into the real world with a 3D track. Um, and also, it's good to know that uh, it's always, yeah, so you can see here, there's always at least three at all times being seen, and that's why these triangles can be drawn. Um, and then this blue line is showing that um, all the points that weren't seen at the same time, so you can see these two points weren't seen at the same time, it's actually inferring the distance between them. Um, so it's measuring all of these things, and now we have a 3D world that is measurably the same as our uh, 2D video. So, how do you use all this stuff is the question. Uh, well, you need to know when to use which tool. Um, and that's a problem of kind of troubleshooting and experience and looking at a scene and determining, you know, do I need a full 3D track for the scene or can I just do a 2D track? You know, a 2D track is faster. A planar track is faster. A 3D scene track is going to be a little bit more time consuming to get accurate. Um, so you need to look at a scene and understand what do I use in this scenario. So I'm going to get my drawing tool here uh, as we play this scene. I'm just going to turn off the volume of it and hit play. So we can see what do we see when we're looking at the scene. How is this scene moving? Uh, we can see that uh, uh, the person is walking, so there's movement. It's not just rotation. The person is moving through the scene. So we know there is translation in the scene. We know there is rotation in the scene. Uh, so what that means, this is the first of our two kind of 3D tracks, and it's called a free move. So let me get free, free move. And this is the term used for this kind of camera motion. It means you have translation and rotation. Um, and that essentially means that we're going to need probably a 3D track um, because if we look closely, we can see that this plane moves differently than these mountains, and it moves differently than the sky back here. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of different planes of motion uh, between all of this space. And so if you're going to replace this scene with, let's say, a snowy scene, we want to make this an entire snowy scene, that means we need to replace uh, this ground with some snow. And maybe there's some particles of snow flying through our scene. So that means we're walking through the particles. And you know we have our snowy caps and everything up here. So that's going to be a 3D track. However, uh, it is good to know that it's depending on what you're doing. 
So if you look at these mountains, they all kind of move the same way. There's not a lot of parallax between them. Um, they're all kind of sticking together and they're not moving uh, differently uh, versus the mountains compared to this ground. So if our goal is to actually just replace the mountains, just the mountains and not anything else, we could probably do a 2D track uh, of just maybe this rock and it would save you so much time. So you just do a 2D track of this rock and then we can take our, our new picture and stick in our new mountain in this area. And we don't need to worry about the whole 3D track. Uh, another example is maybe, hey, you know, maybe you just don't like the rocks in this area here. You know, we don't like the rocks in this area. We want to replace it with something else, some different rocks. Um, well, this would be a good example of a planar track. We don't need to track all the mountains and the sky and everything back here. We just need to track this uh, plane of parallax. And they're pretty much all on the same plane because it's all almost flat ground. Um, so we would just do a planar track of this, this surface and that would be good enough for that case. Um, so knowing what you need and knowing which tool to use is important. It's going to save you lots of time. So another example of the second type track. So we said, again, this one is a free move. Free move. You should remember this term because we're going to use this in Nuke uh, when we start opening the camera tracker. Um, but our second one is called a nodal pan. So this is the second term you should remember. Uh, this means that the camera is only rotating from its center point. It could be up or down, left to right, doesn't matter. Uh, but if you hit play, you'll see that uh, all the objects are kind of moving at the same speed relative to each other. Um, so that's very important. And that means you won't need to have to worry about parallax between those objects um, if the camera is moving only on a rotation. And this means there's only rotation in this in this video. So that means there's no like the person filming this video is not walking. It's there's no movement uh, between the objects. So if you look, this tree and this tree aren't moving differently. They're moving together. There's no parallax in this scene. Um, so essentially what you could do is you can pretty much probably 2D track anything in the scene. If you want to replace this area, uh, if you wanted to replace something on that tree, um, maybe just this area, you could 2D track something. So you could 2D track everything here because you do not need to worry about parallax difference. Um, so to simplify, if you're trying to build a scene maybe the first time, um, to simplify, you could just shoot it as a nodal pan and you don't walk around and it's going to be much easier to composite. Um, however, the camera moves are a bit less interesting. Um, alternatively, so there's a problem with the 2D track. We're just doing a 2D track. Maybe you want to replace the sky in the scene, which we, we're going to do probably with this shot. Uh, if we just track this point up here, or maybe we just 2D track something over here, it would work for the overall motion. Uh, however, these points are going off the screen at some point. So they're not, there's not a, a lot of good points here that are on the screen the entire time. So we can see oh, this point goes off the screen. Uh, this point's going off, you know, all these points are falling off the screen at some point. Um, so what you can do is do a nodal pan 3D track. And what this does is it's just like a 2D track on steroids. Um, so all it's doing is tracking a ton of little points everywhere and it's analyzing that 2D motion. So it's tracking points everywhere and we're getting a 3D camera uh, for this nodal pan. So now we can easily replace the sky because we have um, a track of all the objects uh, in the scene. So that's good to know uh, the difference between the nodal pan and a 3D track. They're both a 3D track, but one has movement and parallax, so it's more complicated. Um, whereas this is mostly just a 2D, everything's moving relatively the same to each other. Uh, and then the last example here, uh, we have some cars in the mountain back there, and this actually has some parallax, but in Y in the y-axis, so the camera's moving up, which is the y-axis. And if we look here, so we can see that, if we look at the stare at the blue car and look at the mountains, the blue car is moving off your video frame much faster. Um, so if you're gonna do something that you wanna replace this entire landscape, again, you're gonna need to do a 3D track to do stuff like that. But if you're just gonna replace something on the back mountain, maybe you could get away with just 2D tracking that mountain. Uh, or maybe there's not even a good point on that mountain. So you could just planar track 
this this part of the mountain here. Um, so that's all good things to know. So that's the difference between uh, the main the main tracks here, and just a bit of background knowledge.